Chapter 79, One Win Han Sen was no master at rock-paper-scissors, but he had made an effort to improve his ability to make more accurate predictions. It wasn't for games, but for knowing in advance a creature's habits and movements. For an archer, it was undoubtedly a very important ability. Almost anyone could shoot at a target. And there were numerous people who could hit the bullseye from 150 feet away. However, creatures wouldn't stand still all the time, so it was important to be able to predict their movements. To grasp the fleeting opportunity, prejudge the enemy's action, and shoot to kill were Han Sen's specialties. Or he wouldn't have chosen archery to practice. When he first entered God's sanctuary, he didn't have a nice bow and arrows, so he practiced sneak attacks, which had even higher demands for one's prejudgment and reflexes. A little mistake would leave him unable to kill a creature with one blow, which would result in the most terrible counterattack. After his first month in God's sanctuary, Hansen never missed in a single attack, which proved his outstanding skills of prejudgment and timing. Now with so many Geno points gained, Hansen had improved greatly in his reflexes as well. It would be difficult for one to win against him in a game like this one. Rock Paper Scissors The moment when Fang Jingqi said, Scissors, Han Sen and Fang Jingqi reached their hands out again. Han Sen had struck with scissors, while Fang went with paper. Tang didn't expect to lose, and when it hit him that he should grab the plate, his face was covered in wine and some even got into his nostrils, leaving a burning sensation. Tang lost a point. Fang Jingqi wrote it down on a notepad seriously. Tang of course didn't take the loss well. After wiping his face with a towel, he stared at Han Sen and said, again. Han Sen was certainly happy to oblige. The two were at it again. Claiming to be the king of rock-paper-scissors, Tang won less than 40% of the rounds, in which Han Sen was able to block the wine he poured every single time. In the rounds where Tang lost rock-paper-scissors, Han Sen was faster than him and got him every time, leaving Tang soaked in wine. In the beginning, Tang would wipe it away, but later he was so focused on beating his opponent that he would just let it be. No. Let's play finger-guessing instead. It's easy to cheat in rock-paper-scissors, Tang Jinliu could not help but yell after losing seven, and then eight, rounds in a row. Okay, but please tell me the rules, as I've never played finger-guessing before, Hansen said. The rules are simple, Tang explained the rules. Finger-guessing was the same type of game as rock-paper-scissors, but in finger-guessing, the two players' hands had to be placed in front of their body at all times, so the other party could see more clearly and there was less a chance of cheating and changing one's mind. Hansen had not played this one before, so he lost the first four rounds of finger-guessing, but Tang wasn't really cheered by this fact as he was still unable to get any wine on Han Sen's face. After four rounds, Han Sen had mastered the essence of finger-guessing and his excellent skills in pre-judgment and quick reflexes gave him the upper hand again. Wine constantly hit Tang's face, which made him even more eager to win. In a while, he was so wet that it was as if he had just climbed out of a wine bucket. Even his trousers were dripping with wine. Tang thought to himself, how could this be? I should be invincible. Something must be wrong. Fang Jingqi saw that Tang was miserable and tried to stop him twice. But Tang was completely amuck, and all he wanted was to get his money back. I need revenge. I have to soak him in wine as well. No, I will definitely win the next rounds. One win, I need one win at least. Let me have one win. Just one and then I'll stop. Tang's expectation shrunk lower and lower, but he didn't win a single round in the end. In the last few rounds, Tang was a mess and couldn't even win finger-guessing anymore, so Han Sen was in complete control. Chu Wang'a saw it was late and took Yen back to the private room. She thought Han Sen was probably miserable now, playing drinking games with Tang Jinliu and Fang Jingqi. When she approached the room, she couldn't hear anything, so she was wondering if Han Sen was already dead drunk by then. Pushing the door open, she was surprised. Han Sen and Fang Jingqi were sitting at the table, 
drinking tea while chatting. Han Sen looked sober and clean, as if nothing had happened. However, Tang was sitting on the sofa alone, soaking wet and haggard. Chu Wang'a thought Tang looked almost like an assault victim, with his eyes full of tears. Tang, what happened to you? Chu Wang'a was shocked. By no means could she believe that Tang Jinliu was the one getting bullied. Tang just understood what had happened. Without answering her, he fiercely threw himself at Fang Jingqi, shouting, Damn you Jingqi, how dare you set me up? Not quite sure what was going on, Chu Wang'a saw Han Sen smiling at her. He asked, Miss Chu, what's the price of the advanced nutrition solution packages? Now yen is on the package that's $100,000 per month, the effect of which is very limited. The course intensity at St. Paul would probably call for the package costing $300,000 per month. Or her grades and fitness would both suffer, Chu Wanga explained. If she were to use the top package, plus senior physician service, how much would that cost annually? Han Sen asked again. If that's the case, you can choose the school's S-level package, which includes the best of everything and costs 15 million per year. Chu Wanga regarded Han Sen curiously. Great, please get Yen the S-level package when you get a chance, said Han Sen after he saw the newly transferred $16.7 million in his account. Chapter 80, A Test After returning home, Han Sen showed Yen the tutorial of Holy Angel and asked her to memorize it. With the holographic demonstration, it was not difficult to learn. Being intelligent, Yen memorized Holy Angel after watching just a few times. On the next day, the Geno solution compatible with Holy Angel was delivered to their home by the staff of St. Hall. Han Sen asked Yen to drink it in accordance with the instructions. Because practicing hypergeno arts could generate a burden on one's body and each hypergeno art had different effects, most hypergeno arts would have to be practiced along with the using of its correspondent geno solution. An S-class hypergeno art usually came with three bottles of geno solution, so it could be practiced by up to three persons. If the matching geno solution was not used, St. Hall would be exempt from any obligations and medical bills if there was an accident during the practice. Before this, Han Sen did not know how advanced hypergeno arts worked, so he felt lucky that he had successfully practiced jade skin. Yen, this hypergeno art is the secret of our family. Do not let others know about it, okay? Han Sen did not even tell Yen the name, Holy Angel. Han Yen nodded seriously, Yen will not tell anyone that I practiced a hypergeno art my brother gave me. Good girl. If you encounter some danger and someone asks you which hypergeno art you are practicing, tell him you do not know and it's taught to you by your brother, Han Sen said. Yen understands, Han Yen said solemnly. Excellent. Han Sen patted Han Yan's head, feeling pity for his sister. Children who grew up in poor families were better prepared to deal with problems. Han Sen had spent some carefree years when he was a child. When Han Yan was born, however, their family had been declining, so she had never lived a good life. For this, she was more mature than her peers. Luo Sulan was in Second God's Sanctuary these days and just returned home on the fourth day since Han Sen came back. Han Sen also showed Luo Sulan Holy Angel, which shocked her. Although she didn't know too much about hypergeno arts, she could tell that this was no ordinary stuff as the tutorial was very carefully arranged. Sen, where did this hypergeno art come from? asked Luo Sulan, worried. Mom, don't worry. I bought this, Han Sen said. How is possible that you have this kind of money? she asked again. Mom, I am much stronger than before and have joined a military gang in steel armor shelter. This hypergeno art is just a start. We will live better in the future, Han Sen explained how he joined Qin Xian's steel armor gang, reassuring his mother. Son, you have gone far. Luo Sulan's eyes were wet from happiness. She had endured so many hardships to see this day. Mom, don't get emotional. It's a good thing. 
Han Sen had more than a million left in his account after paying for the S-level package for Yen. He gave it to his mother and said, this is what I earned in God's sanctuary recently. Mom you can use it to pay for the daily expenses. You take it yourself. You need the money, Luo Sulan refused to take it. It's fine. I am now with a military organization and my boss is generous. There will be more in the future. Hansen was trying to prepare Luo Sulan for more good news. Sen, keep in mind that you shall never be aggressive. Don't get involved in any trouble, Luo Sulan said earnestly. Mom, I understand. You know your son. I have always been low-key, Han Sen quickly said. Good, good. As for the hypergeno art, you've got Yen started, right? Tell her never to show it off, in case people would be envious. Since father's accident, Han Sen's mother had changed a lot and was constantly afraid that her children would be in danger. Mom, do not worry. I have told Yen and she promised me she would never tell. No, I have to personally tell her again. Luo Sulan got up and went to find Yen. Watching Luo Sulan leaving, Han Sen felt very upset. If it were not for dad's accident, Luo Sulan wouldn't have become so cautious and live in panic all day long. What happened? Han Sen regretted that he was so young and didn't understand anything. All he knew was that dad had an accident. He had asked mom and Mr. Zhang, but they were both hesitant to say anything. Han Sen knew it was not just an accident. In the station master's office at the teleport station, Ong Manli placed a capsule in front of Qin Xian. Station master, you are sure you want to use this? Yang Manli looked at Qin Xian who had picked up the capsule. I have to know why he is not willing to go to Blackhawk, and whether he wants to join my squad, Qin Xian said. There are so many guys like him, cowardly, greedy and lecherous. There is no need to win him over. I think we should make every effort to get Dollar on our side instead, who can become the best archer possible, Yang Manli said. Qin Xian just smiled. Dollar is of course amazing, but a man like him would not give us any chance to control him. Han Sen is still very talented, and I think he can do well. But the person I need must have a clean slate and be willing to join my squad, which takes me some effort to confirm. Yang Manli wanted to say more but Qin Xian stopped her, unless you can get Dollar to join our squad, Han Sen is my choice. Yang Manli did not reply but was secretly determined to find Dollar and persuade him. Han Sen did not know what Qin Xian saw in him that she wanted him to join her squad so bad. Before he entered the teleport station, he made sure that he wasn't in Qin Xian's sight. Unfortunately, nothing could go unnoticed under her nose. Looking at Qin Xian standing in front of him with a faint smile on her face, Han Sen had to step forward. It's been a long time since we fought. Show me your progress. Noticing Qin Xian did not mention other matters, Han Sen was secretly relieved. Han Sen was now much better, but he did not dare to show her all he got. Even if he did, she would probably still beat him. Drink some water. Qin Xian took off her helmet and fetched two bottles of water. She unscrewed a bottle for herself and handed another to Han Sen. Han Sen had no suspicion and drank from the sealed bottle of water. Han Sen, do you think I'm pretty? Qin Xian suddenly asked. Pretty, of course you are, Han Sen was surprised and looked up at her, not understanding why she was asking this question. It was not her style. Do you think my lips are prettier or my eyes? Qin Xian asked again. Han Sen felt dizzy. He could not help but look to the mouth of Qin Xian, and gradually his sight moved up and fell on her bright eyes. Chapter 81, Well-Behaved Soldier The scripture of Jade Skin opened with these words, Jade Skin and Flawless Body, Evils Away and Spells Vain. When he sipped the water, Hansen knew something was wrong, but he still drank it without hesitation. Hearing a humming, Hansen felt like his mind and eyes were sucked into Qin Xian's eyes and that he almost lost his consciousness. 
almost at the same time, a coolness welled from his limbs. Jade skin started to run in his body automatically and the coolness restored his senses. This woman wants to hypnotize me. What's she trying to do? Han Sen sneered inwardly, but didn't show anything on his face. He maintained that confused look. Han Sen, are my eyes not pretty? Qin Xian asked. They are pretty, Han Sen answered in a low voice. Which part of my body do you like best? Qin Xian asked again. Your boobs, Han Sen did not hesitate to answer. Why? Qin Xian asked again. They are big, soft and bouncy, Han Sen replied. Nasty. Qin Xian whispered. When they were in the combat room, Han Sen must have touched her boobs when they fought. Come and touch them, Qin Xian said, lifting her chest. Han Sen did not hesitate to reach out his hands and Qin Xian suddenly pushed his hands aside. Now she could confirm that Han Sen had been completely hypnotized by her, as any normal person would hesitate when hearing such an odd request, which Han Sen did not. Are you dollar? Qin Xian's first question scared the hell out of him. Han Sen didn't realize Qin Xian had connected some dots. Without time to think any further, he answered, no. Qin Xian nodded, apparently not believing the two were the same person herself. She continued to ask, why are you unwilling to go to Black Hawk? Because it was too far away from home, Han Sen replied. How is that relevant? Qin Xian did not understand his logic. I wouldn't be able to take care of my mom and my sister if it is too far away from home, Han Sen replied slowly. Qin Xian was a bit surprised and then her look softened. She asked, have you ever considered to join my squad? No. Why? Qin Xian was slightly angry. I'm afraid of danger. I cannot die, replied Han Sen. Why can't you die? Qin Xian looked at Han Sen, finding his reply curious. If I die, my mom and my sister will be bullied by my relatives, and I cannot let them be bullied, Han Sen continued to answer. Qin Xian's expression became more and more gentle, and she continued to ask, Why did you agree to join Bullseye? Because of you. Me? Qin Xian was confused. Because I like you. Han Sen still had a dull face on. Qin Xian blushed a little, why do you like me? Because you are beautiful. Is there any other reason? Yes. What reason? Surprisingly, Qin Xian was slightly excited to hear the answer. Because you are beautiful. Isn't this the same reason? Qin Xian frowned. No. Why not? Qin Xian looked at Han Sen, puzzled. Because the first time I saw you, I thought you are beautiful, the second time I saw you, you are more beautiful. I can't move away my eyes and want to look at you forever. Qin Xian's cheeks turned crimson. She raised her arm and wanted to slap Han Sen out of it, but eventually didn't have the heart to do that and just gave him a pinch swiftly. Han Sen fell to the ground suddenly with an ouch, acting as if he had fallen under the bed in sleep. Qin Xian subconsciously reached out her hand, but took it back and let Han Sen fall to the ground as she blushed at certain thoughts. What did you do to me? Han Sen suddenly climbed up from the ground and pretended to be frightened. You do not have to worry, I just wanted to know why you do not want to go to Black Hawk. Qin Xian said softly. You hypnotized me? Han Sen was raged. One must go through this process to join the squad. The people we serve are special, so we must guarantee that every member had a clean slate. I myself had to go through the same thing. Qin Xian looked at Han Sen and said gently, you can rest assured that your family will be protected by the military once you go to Black Hawk and join my squad. No one could hurt them. Han Sen looked uncertain and remained silent. Also, I can tell you that each shelter has the same kind of squad, providing service for special clients. This job wouldn't put you in great danger. And that's everything I can tell you. 
you can think about it yourself. Not hearing an answer, Qin Xian had to ask, what do you think? Do you want to join my squad? Do I still have an option? Han Sen said with a wry smile. Try to be admitted to the Black Hawk. After joining my squad, you will be glad about your decision today. Qin Xian patted Han Sen's shoulder, pleased. Oh, if you need anything just let me know. I'll try to assist you so that you could prepare for the entrance exam of Black Hawk, Qin Xian said. I just want to know one thing. When I was hypnotized, did you ask me any other question other than why I wasn't interested in Black Hawk? Han Sen asked. No, I am a well-behaved soldier. And I am not interested in your private matters, Qin Xian said categorically, with her heart pounding as if there were a cat scratching at it. Really? Han Sen seemed to be worried still. Of course not. Let me know if you need anything. As long as it doesn't cost too much, I will help you prepare for the exam, which is in less than two months, Qin Xian sighed said and left, her face burning. After Qin Xian left, Han Sen let out a long sigh of relief. From now on, Qin Xian probably wouldn't suspect him again. This is an excellent opportunity. Qin Xian would completely trust me after this so she can become my cover. Others would think I got stronger and better because of her help and wouldn't suspect that I am dollar. Then, I could gradually show my real ability using my own identity and abandon the guise of dollar altogether, Han Sen thought to himself. This was why he had agreed to Qin Xian's ask. Also, his family could indeed use the protection of the military. Han Sen then teleported into God's sanctuary as it was Dollar's time to participate in the second round of the martial arts contest. Chapter 82, Fighting Luo Tianyang Han Sen, not evolved. Status, none. Lifespan, 200 years. Requirements for evolution, 100 Geno points. Geno points gained, 100 ordinary Geno points. 100 primitive geno points, 47 mutant geno points, 29 sacred geno points. Beast souls gained, sacred blood black beetle, sacred blood bloody slayer, sacred blood purple winged dragon, mutant three-eyed cat, mutant black barracuda, mutant black stinger, mutant sawfish. Han Sen looked at his current data and felt satisfied. Now he had as many as three sacred blood beast souls and several mutant beast souls. Only two of the mutant beast souls were less than satisfactory and they were both from someone else. The mutant three-eyed cat was a pet that was useless at the moment and the mutant black barracuda Lu Weinan gave him was an aquatic mount, which was completely useless on the land. At a grove near steel armor shelter, Han Sen was meeting with Lin Beifong. Han Sen was deliberately giving Lin the mutant creature meat he promised a few days later than when Dollar sold mutant black stingers. This is for you. Han Sen took two dried sawfish out of his bag and gave them to Lin. Black stingers were no longer an option, so he had to give the fish to Lin. Two. Lin was overjoyed. Yes, it was a good trip. Han Sen gave him back the rest of the arrows, which were not really put into use. It's fine. Keep them. Sen, can I join you next time? Lin Beifong looked at Han Sen expectantly. I will if there is an opportunity. Please take the arrows back. Han Sen insisted. Lin had to take the arrows back, and the two returned to the shelter as they were talking. At the gate of Steel Armor Shelter, they ran into Son of Heaven's gang. Luo Tianyang stared at Han Sen as if he were to devour the guy. Son of Heaven, long time no see, Lin said. Lin, why are you with him? Son of Heaven gave Han Sen an unkind glance. Sen is my friend and there seems to be nothing that can't be forgiven between you two. How about we let Han Sen buy us drinks and you can just let it go? Lin asked Son of Heaven. Let it go? Who do you think you are? Luo Tianyang looked at Lin contemptuously. Shut up. Son of Heaven stopped Luo Tianyang and said to Lin, Lin, it's not that I don't respect you, but it is not that simple. 
if it is not settled properly, it will never be over. Settle how? I will pay however much you think he owes you, said Lin. It's not about money. You can ask him yourself, son of heaven said and entered the shelter with his gang. Sen, what was that about? Lin looked at Hans and puzzled. He thought their conflict was only the ass freak incident. Hansen told him about the purple winged dragon and Lin smiled wryly, it was indeed a big deal for Son of Heaven. Lin paused and laughed. But it does not matter, you did not get the beast's soul anyway. I will try to mediate between you two. It's not a good idea to have Son of Heaven as an enemy. Just between us, you could offend a gentleman, but never a villain. The two also entered Steel Armor Shelter. Everyone inside the shelter seemed to be talking about some news. Hansen listened carefully, and it turned out that Dollar was against Luo Tianyang in the second round. Dollar against Luo Tianyang. It must be an excellent fight. Son of Heaven must still be bitter from Dollar seizing his bloody slayer beast soul. Luo Tianyang would probably try to kill Dollar for him. Kill Dollar? I don't think he can even last longer than 10 minutes. That's not fair. Dollar is strong but so is Luo Tianyang. With the support from Son of Heaven, Luo probably has as many beast souls as he wishes. I think the result is hard to tell. I say it's easy to tell. Dollar will win. Haha, <laughs> I agree. Does Luo Tianyang have wings? Can he fight a golden horn Shura? Exactly, how can Luo Tianyang even compare? I think it will take three minutes for Dollar to get rid of him. Han Sen did not expect to meet Luo Tianyang in the second round. He sneered inwardly, the mills of God grind slowly. This bastard is now in my hand. Lin Beifeng's eyes lit up. Last time I missed Dollar's fight. Let's go watch this one. I will not go. There is some family business I need to take care of. Of course Hansen couldn't watch, if he went, then Dollar would be missing. You won't come? It's Dollar. Lin was shocked. What's so special about him? He is just a person. Hansen shrugged. He is special. I never admired anyone, but Dollar is an exception, just because he fought that Shura, Lin said. Okay, but I really need to go home, so maybe next time. Hansen chuckled inwardly. Unfortunately, video cameras don't work in God's sanctuary, or we can record it and post it on the Skynet. It will go viral for sure. Lin Beifong bemoaned and left for the Marshall Hall. Hansen took a detour and reappeared in the shelter after he put on the black beetle armor. This time he was prepared and wore a cape over the armor, covering almost everything. Although he looked strange, he wasn't recognized like last time. Hansen found a corner seat in the stands and sat down, watching others fight as he waited for his turn. Before long, a group of people sat down close to him. Hansen was shocked to see they were the Bullseye members, with Yang Manli leading the team. They were a big group and Hansen had picked a sparsely seated corner, so they all came here. Su Xiaoqiao was seated next to Han Senator Yang Manli and Lu Hongtao were only two seats away. I say buddy, why are you covered all over in such hot weather? Are you dressing as a witch? Su Xiaoqiao always liked joking and threw a comment at Han Sen. Brat, I'll deal with you later, thought Han Sen, not saying anything. Manli, who do you think will win, Dollar or Luo Tianyang? Several members of Bullseye started a heated discussion. Chapter 83, One Minute Fight Dollar of course. Right, Manli? Su Xiaoqiao asked. Yang Manli nodded, apparently agreeing with Su Xiaoqiao. Lu Hongtao commented on the side, even Dollar is strong, he is just one person, without anyone behind his back, while Luo Tianyang was supported by Son of Heaven. It is still hard to tell who will win. One person is enough. Dollar fought a golden-horned Shura alone. Even with a gang behind him, 
I don't think Luo Tianyang could do that, Su Xiaoqiao said with disdain. Young man, you are too young to understand. Lu Hongtao acted as an elder. What don't I understand? Su did not take that comment well. Think about it. If Son of Heaven and his whole gang all let Luo Tianyang use their beast souls, who do you think will win? Don't forget that Son of Heaven has a sacred blood shape-shifting ape beast soul, and God knows how many mutant beast souls he has. If Luo Tianyang used them all, do you still think Dollar will win? Lu Hongtao said confidently. It's just an ape beast soul. Dollar has a bloody slayer beast soul, wings and sacred blood armor. It would be easy for him to win Luo Tianyang. I don't think Luo Tianyang could last a minute. Su Xiaoqiao said disapprovingly. This kid sure knows how to speak. Han Sen was pleased with Su Xiaoqiao's words. Well, you just said Luo Tianyang couldn't last a minute, so let's make a bet. If Luo lasts less than a minute, you can have my mutant beast soul of red hoofed beast. If he lasts longer than that, your mutant nocturnal wolf beast soul will be mine. Do you dare to bet against me? Lu Hongtao looked at Su Xiaoqiao and said. Su Xiaoqiao suddenly got nervous. One minute was just a figure of speech. How was it possible for one to end the match in a minute after all? Like Lu Hongtao had said, Son of Heaven had Luo's back. With some beast souls here and there, Luo Tianyang could definitely stay on the stage longer than a minute. The nocturnal wolf beast soul was a lucky gain of Su Zhao's when he shot an arrow at the nocturnal wolf king in a recent campaign. He had been bragging to everyone about it. Yet Lu Hongtao had proposed to use this beast soul as the stake in a bet that was less than fair. Lu, we were just chatting. No need to get serious. Yes Lu, Xiao Xiao was just saying. Yeah, figure of speech. Several Bullseye members tried to smooth things over, but being unreasonable, Lu Hongtao said with a mean tone, I'm trying to teach him not to comment on things he doesn't understand. He could say whatever he wishes at home, but in the society, a wrong comment could get him killed. S asterisk hashtag T. You insist? A bet is a bet. I'm game. Don't be a deadbeat when you lose. Although Su Xiaoqiao was usually joking and messing around, he still had his pride as he was from a wealthy family. Even at the cost of a beast soul, he wouldn't be a doormat. Xiao Xiao, just suck it up. The teammates next to him all tried to stop Su Xiao Xiao from getting involved in this unfair bet. He would be basically giving the beast soul away. Lu Hongtao didn't have the best personality and not many liked him except for a few henchmen of his. Almost everyone was on Su's side. Well, I appreciate a young man that can stick to what he believes in. If you don't trust me, we can both transfer our beast souls to Monli and let her be our witness. So that we could both be reassured, Lu Hongtao said and gave his beast soul of red hoofed beast to Yang Monli. Lu, it's just a small difference. We all are in bullseye, and there is no need to do this. Yang Monli frowned. Monli, I'm doing this for his own good. If he keeps being insolent like this, he might get into bigger troubles elsewhere in the future. Lu Hongtao gave Su a contemptuous glance and said to him, If you apologize to me right now, I'll let this go. And remember to watch it in the future. Everyone thought Lu Hongtao was just shameless. If these words came from another person, Su Xiaoqiao might apologize, but Lu saying this himself made an apology an impossible option for any guy with dignity. Everyone knew there was no going back at this point. Su gritted his teeth and raged, Lu Hongtao, cut the crap. I'm down. Su Xiaoqiao then transferred his mutant nocturnal wolf beast soul to Yang Monli, Monli, keep this for me. When I win, I'll treat everyone to barbecue. I like a young man who doesn't know any better. Lu Hongtao was overjoyed. A mutant beast soul was very rare and he had just gained one with a few words. Also, the mutant nocturnal wolf was a shape-shifting beast soul which was worth even more than his mount beast soul, 
red-hoofed beast. Yang Manli frowned. She had wanted to mediate the dispute with a few words, but Lu Hongtao said those words first so that Su Xiaoqiao had to bet against him now. The young man is too impulsive, maybe a loss could be considered a lesson for him. Yang Manli sighed. Things had come so far that there was nothing she could say to turn it around. Su Xiaoqiao felt upset after accepting the bet. Although he was confident in dollar and believed he could win, one minute was simply too short. Even the exchange of pleasantries could last that long, not to mention Luo Tianyang did have many resources. If he had really borrowed the eight beast soul from Son of Heaven, the match could easily last longer than ten minutes. The match between Luo Tianyang soon began and Su Xiaoqiao murmured his prayers, Dollar, it was me who spread your name. Please help me. I haven't had the nocturnal wolf beast for long and don't want to give it to Lu. Sitting next to Su and hearing everything, Han Sen was mad, help you. In the beginning, everyone was calling me Dal, and it was all because of you.